Crystal Jackson, welcome back to the Smart Nutrition Made Simple show. What's going on? Nothing much, man. Just living my best life. I got three kids in sports, married for 18 years, and here with you now. It's awesome. I'm thrilled to have you here and to catch up. It's been a while. Um, and I love you know, being able to have a conversation with you and your husband, Curtis, and who, who also has been on the, the podcast a couple of times because um, we've kind of gone up through the years together through all the trials and tribulations of, of business and kids and uh, travel and, you know, our health journeys and what have you. So I always think it's fun, you know, where we are now, having been through so much to reconnect and um, just have the opportunity to kind of dig in and talk shop. So glad to have you. So Crystal, um, what are you guys working on right now? Like what's new in your world? So my husband and I used to own a gym back in San Diego and now we live in Montana. But um, after running our gym for a lot of years, you know, my husband came to me and he was just like, I, I'm just ready to move somewhere else. And he loved hunting and loved fishing. And he's like, I just see myself in Montana. And I'm like, there's no huh. way, like no way of moving to Montana. I actually said, you're effing crazy. I play beach volleyball three days a week. We live walking distance, you know, a mile from the beach, walking distance to our gym. Like life was easy and good. And our business was the best it had ever been. But also there was like pull in our heart that was like, okay, well, let's just see. Maybe there's something better that we don't even know about, right? So we lived in sunny Southern California, 70 degrees most of the time. And we up and rooted ourselves to Whitefish, Montana, which has winter. That was a wild experience of, you know, going from sunny and 70 to experience the hardest, coldest winter of Montana history in the last 20 years. <laughs> and being a California girl, right? You know, we up and rooted ourselves to Montana. And to be very honest, the first year was the hardest year ever because it was so new. It was this unknown territory. But Curtis actually said to me, he's like, you're going to be the one that's going to love it the most. And I can say after being here now seven years, I love it. I love everything about it. I love the hard, actually, a little bit of like winter mm. being hard, but also loving the beauty and nature that we live in every single day. So it's been a, a blessing. It's been a challenge. But as we all know, like with challenges and, you know, comes growth. Like I have grown into this person that I truly believe is so resilient that can handle anything that comes their way. 100%. And that's also part of why, you know, love talking to you guys, because I know you've had a lot of challenges along the way. And by the way, I don't know if you, you guys give yourself enough credit or just to paint the picture, both Curtis and Crystal are, you know, professional level volleyball players or were professional level volleyball players who uh, hung up the flip flop, so to speak, um, to, you know, trade in life in the mountains, which sounds like it's been incredible. But with that, you sold a gym, um, and kind of had to figure out things along the way. So what does life look like now? What does business look like right now? We did sell our business and it was this, okay, what's next. And thankfully at that time, um, I was with it, I was in a community and I had done sales for this company and had a lot of success. By the way, I had no sales experience when they first hired me, like none, and outsold, you know, all these people. So they hired me to come back. I did it for two years, had incredible results. And before I stepped in, and why I'm sharing this is because when you make a decision and you go all in on yourself, you will see incredible results. And that's what I did. I said, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm not just going to do it. I'm going to be the best. Mm. And that's what I stepped into. I became like the leader of the um, sales team, set records within the sales company. And also at that same time, knew that I wasn't living my truth, that I was actually selling people into build your dream life, do what you love, live your purpose, share that with people. You're so qualified already right now. And so I was lying to myself because here I was selling people into their future and what they really wanted, but I was going against what I knew as my truth. 
And I believe that a lot of us do that. And the, you know, the underlying story was, well, I, I don't know enough yet, or what is my true purpose or who's going to listen to me? And so sales really helped me learn to find my voice again. So as an athlete, that was easy, right? Leading on the court was easy. But then this thing of like leading in life was like, okay, well, who's going to believe me? So sales really helped me find my voice and for me to discover what was really important to me and why I must use my voice to inspire others. So back up two years ago, this thing called human design fell into my lap. I was interviewing people like this and I asked this woman this really important question. I said, what was the thing that made your business be successful? What was the turning point for you? Because I was curious, right? So here I am just about to leave my sales position. And I'm, so I'm asking this woman, what's, what's the key? What's going to get me there faster? And she says, uh, when I learned my human design. And so I'm like, huh, I've done a lot of personal development over the years. I've never heard of this. Now I'm intrigued. Well, in that same week, my really good friend that we did sales together, he's like, oh my gosh, Crystal, I just had this human design session and it was mind blowing. Like here, human design is coming into right. my world two times in one week. So now anytime that happens and hopefully someone else can resonate with this is when things come in twos, I perk up and I listen. The first time I'm curious and I'm like, okay, that's intriguing. But when it comes in twos, I know I must listen to that. And so I stumbled into human design and I've been studying it and working with it for the past two years. And it has transformed my life, my clients' lives. And most importantly, I believe it's the key to full permission of who you truly are on a soul level and embodying that and giving permission to people to be that way as well. Amazing. Well, I'd love to find out more. Tell us, like, what is this? What is this human design? It sounds, uh, it sounds revolutionary. and. So enlighten us. Oh my gosh. You're actually asking like a rabbit hole question, which is awesome. So think of human design, like personality tests, right? Like there's all these different personality right. tests and that's great. Like I am through and through a promoter, like for sure I get excited about things and I want to promote and talk about it. Right. So we have promoters and analyzers. Well, that's uh, a personality types. Yep. This is energy types. It's how do we flow with our unique energy throughout the world? That's the best, most simple way that I've found to share that with people. So there's five different main energy types. There's the manifester. So I'm going to just give a tiny breakdown of each okay. one just so you guys can understand yeah, it. Perfect. And then you are the first one. You are the manifester. Okay. You are beautiful manifester that is here to initiate and inform the world of things. You're actually meant to be this little bit of a rebel and go against the grain. So, okay. So tell us how you determined, because yeah. you, you're, you're telling people I'm a manifester. Okay, cool. So like, obviously we'll get into what that means, but tell everyone how you determined this. Yeah. So it's not on my app or a website or anything, but there's multiple sites that you can go to, but you enter in your birthday, your time of birth and your location. Okay. And so yep. those three things bring up your, the, all these different things. Like when you look, it's a chart. Okay. Yep. So it's literally this picture of like your body and then it has all this information. And when you look at it, you're going to be like, what the heck is this? Like, it's the craziest, um, doesn't make sense when you look at it. So I'm just breaking down the most simple thing to know when you first cool. look at your chart is to look at what is your energy type and just knowing your energy type right there will revolutionize the way that you go about life. So, you know, you're this manifester that's here to initiate and inform people of new ways of looking at life, new ways yep. of doing things for you. It's in the health realm and you're going to go against the grain. Hundred percent. You know, by the way, like we have not had this conversation and, and clearly like this is all new to me. I don't know a thing about human design. So Crystal's um, explaining this. I'm, I'm hearing this as you're hearing this. And so this is super interesting to me because right out of the gate, like you're dead on. Mm -hmm. So I've done probably over 70 sessions where I actually, it's an hour and a half session where I share people what their chart says to them. And I've never had one person say, that's not me. Mm. I mean, every time it's just like that hundred percent, that's me. And my husband, Curtis is a manifester. And I'm like, of course yep. you guys get Definitely. along because you guys have 
energy, right? right? And I want to back up and just say, hear the information. Whatever you hear is what you hear, and it's perfect what you hear today. And neither energy type is better than another one. It's just naturally who we are. And when you listen to it and hear it and you're curious about it, don't make any judgments about it. It's just being curious. You can go, huh, I wonder if that actually is me, right? I wonder if that, you know, let me just test the waters here. Human design is a living tool of practice each day. And so it's, it's to me, when we discover and understand our human design, it is the best way to love ourselves unconditionally and love others unconditionally as well. Like that's what I've experienced through this whole process. So let me jump in though and share the next four because it's important that everybody hears like they're, you know, the four or five okay. different types. So okay. manifestors are here to initiate things. The generator is here to make magic happen in the world. So they are what's called the life force of the world. So some people naturally have this energy that is undescribable when they get passionate about things. So I don't know about you, but I was called an energizer bunny my entire life. Like literally it was crystal has so much energy. Well, that's because each morning the generator has a certain amount of energy that they need to expend. They're the people that take a project and finish it to completion as a manifester. Okay. You're here to initiate the project. You're not here to fulfill on the whole project. You're here to have the idea to pour your energy in and then actually step mm. away. Now, let me share a little story that will resonate hopefully with you is, you know, in our gym business, Curtis is a manifester. I'm a generator. And we would have clients coming in at two o'clock and at 12 o'clock, he'd be like, Crystal, I'm going to go take a nap. And I'm like, what are you talking right. about? Take a nap. We have like 25 programs to finish writing and you're going to take a nap. Like that's what I'm thinking in my head. Right. So I became resentful to Curtis, like, okay, fine, I'll do all the work, right? Now, I naturally have an overflow amount of energy, and especially when I do things that light me up, that is the key for a generator, to find what they love and pour their energy there. But the manifester pours energy in, and then they need to go take a nap to reboot their energy system. That sounds familiar. Yeah, and Christina, by the way, is most likely a generator. 100%, Just knowing yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> was definitely leaning that way, but I, I felt like I needed to hear the the other three just to be sure. Totally. But here's the the beautiful part of understanding my husband's energy is now I'm not resentful for that. I actually say, hey, babe, do you need to go take a nap? He's like, yeah, you know what? I just, I need to go recharge my battery. So I want you guys to hear that. Like now I see him in a different light versus like, okay, fine. I'm going to do all the work. It's oh got it. He needs to go recharge his battery. He doesn't have the battery like mine. Right. And again, neither one is good or bad. So, uh, the third type is called a manifesting generator. Manifesting generators have both the manifesting energy and the generator energy, but in human design, they lean more on the generator side. So here's the little bit of difference between a generator and a manifesting generator. Manifesting generator is going to have this overflow of energy when they do things that light them up and excite them, but they're going to do it their way. They're going to do it differently than anybody else because they have that inner rebel too. So they're not meant to follow the one way to success. They're actually going to create the new way mm. to success, which is their way. And they are multitaskers through and through. I have many clients that are actually manifesting generators. And one of them told me, Crystal, when I have nine plates running in the air, that is like when I'm in my zone and I feel the best hmm. because the manifesting generator is here to show us how to multitask with grace. Right. They're beautiful in their own way. Then we have projectors. Projectors are here to make things more efficient and effective. I have a projector son. Okay. My oldest is a projector. And what's beautiful is <laughs> he'll be like, hey, mom, why didn't you do it this way? Like making things more simple, whatever it is, just thinking of a project. And he'll be like, well, why didn't you do it this way? I'm like, because I didn't see it that way. I'm a generator that's like, let me see how much I can work because we love to work. Right. 
where so a projector comes in and why in business this is important to have is to have a projector on your team to go okay hey you know what we can do this 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 in an hour versus five hours they're literally here they see the world differently i truly believe that projectors are the new leaders because the whole hustle mentality totally i believe comes from the generator because that's a generator they're like oh i hustle i make things hard I can make success happen. Well, the projector is like, let me show you how to do it and do it in the best, most efficient way and in less time. Mm -hmm. So we love, I love projectors. I love them <laughs> so much. Yep. The last energy type is reflectors. Reflectors make up about 1% of the world. And so they're actually here to sample life. And the biggest thing for a reflector is to let life come to them. So they have a very open aura, which means they're sampling life all the time. They're learning from others. They have the biggest wisdom. They are the people that you go to for the deep wisdom because they've experienced so many different things throughout their life. And again, I just want to go back that who, whatever your energy type is, is perfect for you. So don't make up a story that, oh, I got to be a manifester. That's the problem I see in business is that people are operating who they think they should be. And even those words are so heavy because when we operate from the shoulds, we are not in alignment with who we truly are and our energy. Mm -hmm. So when we tap into, okay, what feels the best? What is the most alignment? What is What excites me the most? That's where I follow. And I inspire my clients to follow that as well because that's their truth versus the shoulds of life is really like, you know, coming from like a different source. It's coming from a mom, dad, someone who thinks that, you know, they know it all. And I, I just don't operate that way. No, a hundred percent. And so that's so interesting. I mean, first of all, I, I think of different people when you're explaining each of the, each of the types, which is pretty <laughs> remarkable and, and absolutely identify Christina as generator. And you two are very similar, which is, again, is part of the reason we, you know, uh, we probably all get along so well and speak the same language uh, in multiple capacities. So what do we do with this information? How do we leverage this to our benefit in business, in life, in, in our family life, as parents? Like, What can those of us listening do with, with this information? Mm, that's a great question. And we're going to go multiple different directions on this. I want to talk about first why this is relevant for you as a human being, as a parent, an entrepreneur, and just a human, right? So one thing I didn't share, and I'll go through and share for each uh, energy type is how do we know when we're out of alignment? That to me is really important to understand. The reason why it's important that we understand when we're out of alignment to me when that happens, when we're not living in our human design energy, we get to heal something within. And so if you want to be the most successful entrepreneur, you becoming this person that um, is healed inside empowers others. Sure. Right. So it starts with you. Right. So as a manifester, your non-self energy, when you're out of alignment, is anger. And what you truly crave is peace. And what's fascinating is my husband and I, you know, we have a lot of deep conversations. That's very important for me is having relationships with people, but not the topical stuff. Right. Like that doesn't light me up. I want to talk about like the goods. Right. right. And I remember him saying before I knew anything about human design and his type, Crystal, I just pray for peace. So right there, he's a manifester. He's praying for peace yep. and his non-self energy is anger. That's not who he is though. But there's something inside that's happening. And typically what I have found, it's come down to these four things, not feeling seen, not feeling heard, not feeling appreciated and not feeling respected. Mm -hmm. So when the anger, and I'll tell you the other energy types too, come up, you got to look within, and this is going to help you in business and life and your relationships where the most important things, right? And so looking at that, okay, what's actually coming up for me? Why? The question I ask is, why is this coming up for me? And underneath all four of those, Ben, is that you're not feeling loved. Yeah. Right? So that's really what it comes down to. So for the manifester for you, it's anger. When you feel that anger, ask yourself, instead of getting more angry, 
you ask yourself, okay, why is this happening for me? Because mm -hmm. there's a blessing. Okay. Now for the generator, it's frustration. And I laugh when I say that because I can remember being in college and being like, ah, I'm so frustrated, right? I was never the angry person. I've never been the angry person, but I've been the frustrated person and feel like I'm hitting my head against the wall. And so now when the frustration comes up, I ask myself the question, why is this coming up for me? I want to take a step back, Crystal, because I want to apply some context to this, at least the way in which I'm thinking about it and perhaps for our audience, because I think it's easy um, to listen to this and kind of lose sight of the big picture is, is we listen to some, th some of this stuff and there might not be an immediate connection. And what I appreciate about what you're saying is just listen, just try and resonate with it. Um, and and see if you identify with any of the things that we're talking about. Now, listen, to be fair, is like this is a podcast about nutrition and health and fitness. And why I think this conversation is specifically relevant, just in case, you know, you're listening and feel yourself tuning out, is because it's not because our results are not a product of, as I've spoken about before, is not about the X's and O's of nutrition. It's at the end of the day, it's not about calories. It's not about the amount of exercise that you do. Uh, so much, it's, it's so much more about your behaviors, your lifestyle, your alignment, like as Crystal's talking about with who you are, kind of what's going on between the ears. And so if I'm able to help make a connection here around you coming to the realization that Perhaps you're just not living in alignment with who you truly are. And because of that anger, because of that frustration, because of the stressors that that creates in your life, it contributes to why you have such a hard time creating the behaviors that you desire, right? Making the right choices, surrounding yourself with the right people, um, because it's not uncommon for us as coaches. And Crystal, I'm sure you had this for years where you would be coaching clients around maybe nutrition or fitness and, and you'd, got, you'd basically come to the realization, it's like, you're just unhappy with your lifestyle. Like the people you surround yourself with, maybe your spouse, maybe you hate going to your job every single day, sitting in traffic, right? And, and, and so much of this life that you created is not, um, is not what you truly want. And so as I'm listening to you here, I can, I feel like I can make that connection around the value of identifying these things as an opportunity for people to actually be honest with themselves around whether they actually are living in congruence with who it is that they want to be. Is that fair? A hundred percent. And I'm so glad you brought this up, Ben, because um, I can relate my own story to your audience. So you might be hearing, okay, this is a pro athlete. She's got it all together. She's figured out her body or whatever story that you're telling yourself right now. But let's just back up. And, you know, when I was playing pro beach volleyball, I was the heaviest I had ever been in a bikini. And you know what I was saying to myself? I'm, you're not enough. You're not pretty enough. Your body's not enough. You're never going to make it to the top. Total self-destruction. And now when I look at my human design, I actually understand why. It, so I can understand the value of understanding myself energetically would have helped my career be better. I would have been stronger up here to not pull myself down and put myself in the not enough category. I mean, also we owned a gym, so my body was never good enough for owning a gym. Right. I didn't even feel like I was enough for being married to my husband at one point. Like literally after three years, I'm like, why are you married to me? So human design, like relating those two together and your health has given me the permission to understand why do I have these beliefs come up and these thoughts, but also that's not who I truly am, right? So health yeah. and nutrition, if you're struggling with your weight, there's information there, but you said the key word, are you being honest with yourself? To me... If I, for me to make the biggest trans, uh, transformation in my life and for my clients, you got to be real with yourself. And it doesn't mean that you have to put yourself down, but you get to be honest about where you are right now in your life 
And are you really okay with it? Yeah. If you don't like your, your job or your career, but you have this story that you can't leave because you got to, you know, provide and take care of, you know, take care of the family with the money that you make. Well, that is a story because it's possible for you to leave. Or maybe you don't believe that you can actually have the body of your dreams. What is the story that you're actually telling yourself? Right. And that to me is when you are honest, transformation happens. And so to like relating this back to human design is, you know, again, going back to the shoulds conversation, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Well, what if you could see life differently? What if you could see yourself in a different light? As a society, we are more likely to put ourselves down than to be proud of who we are. Yeah. I mean, that's just... Uh, through and through coming from the gym days that I remember seeing parents, I'd be like, Oh my gosh, so good to see you. You look fabulous. Oh no, I've put on 10 mm. pounds. And so we're actually denying people's love. When we do that, we're actually blocking people's love, right? Where it's like, what if you could just love who you are? And at that same time, what if you're open to improving yourself? Yep. And it's being honest. hundred percent. No, no, no. That's great. And and I just, I needed to offer uh, some context and to kind of preface the conversation as much as possible, because this genuinely is relevant. At the end of the yeah. day, if you're on a, a weight loss journey and a health journey and, and you're not being honest with what it is that you want or who you say that you are, like you're going to end up sabotaging yourself in some situation, whether you realize it or not. Um, and, and likely you won't realize it until you've done it time and time and time again. And then you're like starting to see those patterns at play. So, okay. So you were talking, the generators expresses there is expressed in frustration, right? Yeah. So generators, yeah. Coming back here, generators, non-self energy. And let, let me just share why this is so relevant to understand is because we're not meant to operate in anger, frustration. The other one is bitterness and disappointment. But that to me, emotions are safe. The emotions have not been taught to be safe. And it's one of the things that I know I'm passionate about sharing is that feel your emotions. It doesn't mean that you're good or bad, right or wrong, but it's an indicator that something is off. So if you're a generator and you feel frustration on your weight loss journey, Okay, something's off. Look at that. What 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 are you feeling? Why is this coming up? You got to be honest with yourself. Manifesting generators again, they lean more on the side of being a generator than a manifester, but they express in both anger and frustration. I have a little girl who is a manifesting generator. Well, she's got two bigger brothers. And so this is what it sounds like. Ugh! And then she screams for what she wants because as a manifester we are expressing ourselves through the throat and the anger comes out through yelling, hmm. right? Again, not good or bad, but I will share for my little manifesting generator when that happens and everybody, you, oh, we all can do this. I go, honey, put your hand on your heart and let's take a deep breath, <sighs> right? Slow it down because the manifester wants peace. So the breath brings peace to us. Even if it's frustration, take a breath. And then I'll ask her, by the way, she's four, you guys. If a four-year-old can do this, you can do this. You just have to be open and willing. And I say, ask me again in your power what you want. So it teaches her to connect with her feelings and emotions and to come back to her power. And then she'll be like, mommy, can I please have blah, 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 please? Yeah, of course. You ask me in your power, right? So it's like those anger and frustration that comes up are just indicators that she's not feeling seen or heard right then. That's right. all it is, right? Now, the next one is uh, projectors. They feel bitterness. Now, again, I have a, a projector son, and it's not necessarily they express it through their throat. It's the facial expressions. It's the squinting of the eyes. Like you probably might even think of someone like, oh, yeah, they get bitter, <laughs> right? That is their non-self. They're not feeling seen and appreciated. A projector for them to be in their essence, which is what they want, is to feel successful. They need to feel appreciated and recognized. So even I can relate this to a weight loss journey, like people getting bitter because they're not losing the weight or people aren't recognizing that they've put in all this time and effort right. and people aren't seeing their results. 
they want to feel acknowledged. It's not good or bad. It's just what lights them up, right? Yeah. Then the last one is reflectors. Reflectors non-self is disappointment. It's they will just feel disappointed. But what they truly want is to feel surprised. Like people recognize them, people see them, and they will feel this sense of surprise. And I realized through all of this, I didn't tell you guys generators and manifesting generators, generators, they want to feel satisfied. They want to feel that what they created in the day, it feels, they feel satisfied by the end of the day. Definitely. Yeah, no, no, no. That's that's awesome. I mean, again, I can I can really relate to to the way in which you're describing it and see the overall importance. Um, and and so more tangibly is upon acknowledging where we fall within the spectrum, what our, you know, frustrations and behaviors look like, or as you said, non non-self. What how do how is it? How do you explain it? Yeah, out of, I say non-self or out of alignment. So what we do, what our behaviors look like when we're out of alignment, how do we apply this? How is it relevant to think about applying this to our day-to-day -day life? I, like I appreciate how you're giving examples of how you communicate with your children, right? So, so clearly by understanding, you know, where your kids align, like you're able to communicate effectively with them, where your spouse, I imagine with your employees, right, is, is giving you the knowledge to be able to effectively communicate and relate, right, and put them in the right positions to be successful based on their strengths and weaknesses and, and, and limitations from what we understand about human design. Is that fair? hundred percent. I mean, it makes me when I understand someone's human design and now I can see it, right? I can see like without even seeing uh, Christina's chart, knowing she's a generator, yeah. most likely. I mean, I'm 95% sure. No, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So now like me understanding just the energy types and this is like, t this is the first level. There's so many levels of human design, but now again, I can look at that person and love them unconditionally, right? I can understand, okay, got it. My projector son is going to pour his energy into something. And then I can say, Hey, bud, do you need to go take a nap or go just go rest for a little bit? He's like, yeah, you know what, mom, I do. Now he feels seen mm. and think about taking even just an idea for you that came up as you were speaking, applying this to your clients of understanding their energy type and going, okay, got it. This generator, you know, they could probably handle training harder than a manifester or a projector, sure. you know what I'm saying? So you could even apply it that way as well. So this is your relationships. This is business, knowing who you're partnering with. You know, um, I always say to my husband, Curtis, I'm like, hey, like you're the initiator, bring me ideas. And then when I get lit up by an idea, I can take it and run yeah. and create results with it but he supports me with that. Or my projector son that when we don't have a solution and we literally, he's 11. Hey bud, what do you think? If you have a projector in your life, it's very important that you ask them, what do you think? Because they're very insightful. They see life differently. And so now I can get ideas from him versus like the generator that just, it, they are a workhorse. They literally are the life force of the world of making things happen. And it's so the pitfall is that we can easily work, 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 work. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. How are you using this with your clients? Like, what does this look like if I'm interested in learning more about my human design? If I want to be able to more effectively understand who I am, like my strengths, being able to utilize this with my clients, with my employees, with within my family, like. How do we go about doing that? So I have a human design session. That is the first thing we start off with because you must understand your energy and the way that you work best. And again, I know I've said it, but it's a curiosity thing and it's practice. It's like, okay, let me test the waters and see, does this resonate with me? And does this make my life easier? That's the whole point of this. Let's just call it the blueprint of life of ourselves. 
right? The point of it is to help our life flow easier. So we start with that. And then I also have another session afterwards that teaches you, like when you look at the chart, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, what are all these numbers? Well, those are called gates, but those gates are actually keys and information of your special gifts. So now when you hear these gifts, maybe it's something that you never thought was a gift of yours, but now you can go, okay, like I have the gift of sales and enrollment. I had no idea. But after I learned it, I was like, oh, well, when I'm really passionate about something, it is easy for me to share this with others sure. and help people like make a decision. I'm not the pushy salesperson. I, I've done that and it doesn't work. Right. Not, and it's not my energy. Like it's not my natural being to be that way. So those are two things. And then it looks different for each person. So it could be like if you have your own business and you have clients, we actually look at who are the people that you're working with. And how can you guys work together in a more cohesive way? And, or I've done it with clients that I look at their children's charts. And so now I teach them how to speak directly to that child, because I don't know about you growing up, you know, it's, and my parents did their best. I know they did. They loved me unconditionally. They did their best. And there were still times when I didn't feel seen, heard, loved, appreciated, right? So if I can speak to my partner, my children, my employees, my coworkers in a way that they feel loved, everybody wins, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And that's well explained since, since you've been leveraging this for the last, last few years, how has life changed since uh, understanding this practice? Oh my gosh. Uh, first, understanding myself has been the greatest gift. I have what's called, and this is going to be a little out there, but this one part of me, I'll say it in a simple way, that would always ask the question, Ben, who am I and why am I here? And I just, I mean, it's been this lifelong discovery, right? Mm -hmm. Of like, well, who is Crystal and why is she here? Does my voice really matter? Do people really hear me or trust me? Now, again, that's just patterns that I grew up learning. Yeah. And so being able to look within and understand myself has been the greatest gift I've ever given me. But that gift has transformed my relationship with my husband, my children, my mother, my sister, my brother, my dad's passed away, but it's like, it has changed my relationships, number one. And now when I do business, business is different. It's not so hard. Right. It's not like I, I don't have to work all the time. That is hard too. I will be honest. Like even um, we were driving home from this trip and I was excited to get home and get back to work, but I get to love that part of me that loves to create. But now I don't do things to just make money, which I used to. Now I'm doing it for the bigger vision, purpose, and passion. And I'm teaching my clients how to create a business that's in alignment for them based on their energy type. Like my guy friend who got me into human design, I did a session with him. I was like, I know you've had it, but let me just share what I see and let's see if we unlock something for you. And he's a manifester. And I said, what's your biggest challenge right now that you're facing? He's like, well, I'm not getting paid by this client. And I was like, okay, let's just see what opens up here by our session. And at the end, I was like, buddy, you, you're the initiator. You got to go to your client and talk to them, inform them that they need to pay you. And the next day he sends me this message. He's like, I talked to my client, they paid me. And then a month later, the, the client now is paying him almost double. And mm. like his business is blowing up because he is initiating, yeah. but he was acting like a generator. He was being a workhorse instead of being that initiator that he's meant to be. So to me, it's priceless information for us first to understand ourselves and understand our energy and love ourselves unconditionally. Love the parts that, okay, got it. I got some work to do over here and love the parts of, okay, this is easy for me. And then now tapping into business to make business in a way that flows for you and it's not so hard. Hmm. Uh, you know, a couple of things that I thought about when you were explaining that is, um, would be looking at it as an opportunity to give you permission to do the things that you feel naturally inclined to do. And, and by that same token is giving you permission to, well, let's just say delegate or absolve yourself of the responsibility of doing the things that you 
feel like you have to do, but don't want to do. A hundred percent. My projector son is the best delegator for, and so we have a projector son and a generator son. So now I look at their energies of my projectors, like delegating to the yeah. generator, the worker B, right? right? And, <laughs> and then I have to step in and I'm like, Hey bud, like you, you get to own that. Like I love, and I, and, but I acknowledge him. I'm like, Hey, I love that you can see to delegate that. That is a superpower yeah. of him. So it's going to support him in life. So I don't want to tear him down for it, which I used to, I used to be like, dude, you got to stop, stop giving your brother all your work, but it's <laughs> a superpower of his, but now I can connect with him on it. And now, and on both levels, right? For my oldest and my middle, where I'm like, hey, buddy, my middle son, hey, you don't have to do all the work. It's okay for you to say no. Literally the best gift as a generator and manifesting generator is to say no. Hmm. When you say no to things that do not light you up, you open up the door for the biggest blessing to come in that is a yes and a hell yes at that. You will actually feel it in your body. I've had it where it's like, Oh yeah. Like you get excited, right. Versus the, okay, I guess I'll do it. Like right. you don't want to be resentful right. energy. I love that. Uh, sounds like, um, your son and I might need to have a conversation around some employ some part-time employment. Cause we need some delegation at play here. So send that projector over here. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal, uh, I want to respect your time. Um, I love, love having the opportunity to chat. I'm, I'm super excited and, and kind of motivated by this conversation uh, for those listeners that might find themselves in the same situation, excited, motivated, kind of ready to take the next steps. How can they find out more about you? Oh, thank you, Ben. This has just been so fun. And just so you guys know, this lights me up to speak. So I already, like, I just know this is such alignment. For That's, me obvi to That's obvious. That's obvious. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so finding me on Instagram is the best way at crystal Sue Jackson. And on my Instagram, if you go to my profile, you'll see a freebie on there that you can grab if you want more information on the details of each energy type. And what I always love asking people, and this is so fun because in life, I believe you get to ask for what you want in life. And so if this made a difference for you, what I would love to know is what made the biggest difference and just send me a quick DM. Like I heard your interview with Ben and this is the thing that landed for me or made the biggest difference because that helps me create more content for you to make a difference in your life. You know what? I, I, I actually love the call to action there. And what I'll encourage those of you that are listening, like, listen, if you're in a position where you can formulate a response, like I'd encourage you just take a minute right now and 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 write down or put it in the notepad of your phone of like what the biggest takeaway what the biggest difference maker was for you based on this conversation if you're driving in the car obviously don't don't type and drive but maybe just pull over uh or or do a little voice memo of what made the biggest difference and then please set, do uh send that over to crystal through instagram we'll have the link right down below in the show notes and um i know that uh, she'd find incredible value in that. And and I would as well to know that you got value out of this conversation. So Crystal, thank you. Uh, always a pleasure. I'm, I'm just ecstatic um, and super happy for you guys on your trajectory and kind of the fact that you're doing what you love and um, building better humans in the process. And, uh, and so, you know, we'll, we'll continue the conversation, but uh, thank you for your time. Uh, ben, thank you so much for having me. This has been such a joy and so happy to see how far you've taken your life purpose here. It's truly, um, it's easy to see how much you love it. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. We'll talk soon.